Tell me more about Animal Collective. I would love to. I could talk about them for four hours. Yeah, so I got into them when I was in high school. My buddy Tommy at the time told me, hey, you should get an Animal Collective. And I think I listened to, um, I think their first record that I ever listened to was, I think it was actually Meriwether Post Pavilion. And I was like, you know, this is all right. It didn't really click for me. And then I just kind of kept listening to their albums, their, their kind of stuff from the 2009 era. And then I just started listening to more and more and more of it. And then the next thing I know, they're my favorite band and ever. I was I was obsessed with Animal Collective when I was. Well, I thought Radiohead and Arcade Fire are your favorite bands. They're also my favorite. Well, they're all three. All three of them are amazing. Oh, I, okay. A favorite son. Animal Collective was like my firstborn son, right? And like okay. Radiohead and and Arcade Fire, are like the children I had afterwards. But I don't tell them that yeah. my favorite is the first firstborn. They don't. They don't have to know, but you can know because they're not in the room right now. And so, um. I know way too much about Animal Collective. It's almost embarrassing. But Strawberry Wait, Jam. So they're from Baltimore? They're from Baltimore. They're from Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Deacon, Panda Bear, Geologist, and Avi Terror are the names of the four band members. Strawberry Jam is my favorite record of theirs. But before MPP came out, I don't know if you've ever heard their old stuff, but it's much more acoustic and noisy and way more experimental than MPP. Calling MPP experimental is like, that's like the. <laughs> It's like the OK Boomer album for, for Animal Collective fans. Like, oh, I love Animal Collective. Wow. OK Boomer. Holindigan, which is this record they put out in like 2003, is so much more abstract and ambient and noisy and chaotic. And their very first record, Spirit They're Gone, Spirit They Vanished, is nothing. It was just AV Terror and Panda Bear, which is them two playing on that record, is absolutely nothing at all compared to their newer stuff it's like this is barely music but it's actually a very beautiful album it's i've seen them live um twice i saw them on their painting with tour and their song tongs tour song tongs was this uh, acoustic record they did in 2004 that they played live again in its entirety which was beautiful um what else do you want to know about them i know uh, what's what's their astrological their... signs <laughs> What's their creative process like? Yeah, so they're so Panda Bear lives in Singapore. So I'm the right. guy's name is Panda Bear. I know like nothing no about no Animal Collective other than I now have this vinyl record. So Panda Bear showed up on that one Daft Punk album, uh, their last album, um, the one with Pharrell on it. He did the song like oh sure Panda Bear. Yeah, Panda Bear was on that record, and uh, he lives in uh, Portugal. And AV Tier lives in LA and Deacon's like somewhere, um, Baltimore. They're all over the country. They're all over the world, yeah. basically. And they collaborate by sending each other sound files if they're like living abroad. And then they get in the studio in some central location. They just jam out. And the songs that they jam out end up, it's kind of like Grateful Dead. They'll play live uh -huh. the songs that they're working on. And then if the audience reacts in a particular way, they're like, oh, you know what? That's going on the record because the audience really likes that. So they'll test out their stuff live. They're like validating their ideas, sort of like an entrepreneur does. Really? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll play a lot of uh, stuff live and then that'll go on the record. But Animal Collective is like serious Animal Collective fans are so into the hidden gems of their work. There's a huge back catalog of unreleased songs and songs that didn't make it into like the north american version oh did you hear this song like i went to an animal collective concert and i was with this posse of of diehard anko fans and it's like have you ever heard of sponge anko fans are nerds when it comes to their unreleased tracks i was at an anko concert and i was with this group of other diehard anko fans and we're all sharing like oh have you ever heard of this one unreleased song that didn't get on the record in America and they played it live one time and it has 10 views on YouTube and it's called Sponge Luke. No, I haven't heard of that song. I thought I've heard of every unreleased Animal Collective song. We are nerds for the unreleased Anco deep cuts, but their creative process is so wild in that they have a huge catalog of different experimentations with their sounds that they would perform for their audiences um in in different tours that they didn't really know were being recorded and fans will upload them to the internet and they're the very 
they're they're experimental in a good way i know experimental sounds like hipster trash and like oh i'm a sophisticated experimental artist <laughs> but they use experimentation to discover where their taste is leading them yeah. avitar has this quote that goes something like he's basically saying that the best way to just be inspired is to just use what comes naturally if, if he starts jamming out and it's like the first couple of notes that he's playing that's like he, he's saying that like what's coming to him naturally as he's playing is probably what should go into the song instead of trying to overthink things and over overwrite really? and then trying to so it's more like intuitive up. their sound has always kind of had a kind of rough unfinished feel to it okay. Merriweather post pavilion is the most polished of the of the of their albums production wise everything else kind of sounds like almost unfinished if that makes sense but yeah i'm a huge anco nerd that i've always been so do you think that they pull inspiration from grateful dead oh absolutely they pull inspiration from grateful dead and a band called pavement and yeah they're big pavement fans they were a big um kind of indie grunge band in the late 90s stephen malcolmus and they pull inspiration from they've also featured well they use a lot of found sounds they pull sounds from the environment they've pulled sounds from like forests and oceans there's a band member called nicknamed uh, geologist and they pull sounds from uh like rocks and stones and things crashing on top of each other so how they do use... they specifically record that do you know yeah, with uh, microphones that they pull into the field recordings, they take microphones and with big fluffy things covering them to protect the mic, and they'll record sounds from nature and they'll use they'll they'll run it through tape loops and really distort the sounds so that they sound like something entirely different. But you don't really know that it's a sound from a waterfall crashing until you watch the behind the scenes videos that they have. They did a record um, recently where they were playing in an Amazon rainforest. And again, this sounds so like hipster and like hippie, but it's actually quite accessible. Like my mom likes animal collection. I forgot my mom and her into them. But the, yeah, that's their recording process. They, so they, they go ahead. So they'll go to these natural spots and they'll shoot yeah, yeah. video and record interesting and they'll bring that into their live performances as well by triggering those samples on a little touchpad drum machine thing that plays the samples back again but those samples were recorded in the forest and the, so their whole music is a texture they have texture to their mm. music and they teach you to think about texture and music all of my favorite bands convey texture but it's weird to think of texture music because it's something that you hear sonically, but the sonic texture of their of every one of their albums changes. And so Meriwether Post Pavilion's texture is kind of clean and polished. And then Strawberry Jams is like falling face first into a cactus and like feels. They've got this album called Feels, which feels like you're in the middle of a heartbreak. But that's the texture to their songs that they that they consider. And Radiohead does this too. Arcade Fire does this. It's beyond you, just playing guitar. Your hitting. Radiohead and Arcade Fire uh, love makes a lot more sense now. Really? Yeah. Like just because yeah. uh, I don't really listen to Radiohead or Arcade Fire. I like I like some of their stuff, but it just I just it's not my thing. But the way you explained it and you love the texture and that yeah. every album has a different texture. Something I think about with Radiohead is like, it's the sound is so different. It's so vivid in a way. Like it's very, um, I don't want to overuse the word experimental, but it, sure. it sounds like they're just creating sounds and putting them together and seeing like what happens. It's like almost like a, spontaneous kind of journey in a way it's like almost like there's no destination they're just like making art 